Welcome back. In the last video, we built a basic little capital budgeting model, and here are the formulas that we used. Last thing I did was format these as outputs and forget to format this as an input. So if we know the discount rate, we can find our net present value. We can find our rate of return even without that. Let's pick up and fill in some of the gaps we left before. These were our depreciation schedules. And I told you that uh, if we did five years straight line, we could paste in those factors and we'd come back later and do makers. So I'm going to type in the makers values. I'm going to start with the first year, which is 0.3333, and then move on to the subsequent years. And you can find those in about a million places on the internet for various different depreciation schedules. So well, let's call this one a uh, five year straight line and let's call this a three-year makers. When we get to the dashboard, we'll find a way to make this more elegant, but for now, I'm just gonna come over here and change this to three-year makers. I'm just gonna type an M so I don't have to widen that column for you. And if we were to do that, we would find our DDNA column. And instead of doing the sum product here, times the point twos, we would do it times this schedule. We've still got our absolute values on, so I can hit enter, copy, paste. And notice we still depreciate the entire $10,000. So I could highlight that and look down here and see that the sum is 10. But we do it in such a way that we follow the depreciation schedule. I do want you to stop and think about why some product works the way it does. It multiplies the first row here times the first row here and gets zero. And then the second row here times the second row here and gets zero. Two more times it gets zero, but the last time 10,000 times 0.3333 gives us the 3,333 depreciation that year. When we copy that down, I think I misspoke in the last video and said we get four years of zeros. We only get three years of zeros. In the fourth year, we're multiplying 10,000 times the fourth row over here, which is the second year. And so our depreciation there is $4,445. In the third year, we get a couple of zeros plus 10,000 times the third row over here, and we get our 1481. And then in the fourth year, 10,000 times 0.0741 gives us a $741 of depreciation. In the fifth year, even though my ranges still capture it, I've got a blank, which is a zero up here in that fifth year because three-year makers only last for four years. Here again, the beauty is we can come back and have a subsequent investment and our math would still work just the same. We'd be picking up the fourth year of the $10,000, that's our 741, plus the second year of the $5,000, that's the 4445. And that would give us a total depreciation of 2964. So think about how that works, it's very elegant. The only thing I don't like about it is I have to have enough blank rows up here to account for this blue range, but that's a small price to pay for such elegance. When we do go to the dashboard, we'll talk about how we choose these different depreciation schedules. Right now, I want to add a DDNA schedule. We don't really need it for this model, but this is such a great time to review what you learned in accounting about gross BP&E, accumulated depreciation, and net BP&E. Great time to talk about that. So again, I'm going to hit Control-1 go to the alignment with my left right keys, Alt H to go to text horizontal alignment, down arrow to center that one across the selection. And then I'm gonna get all these and do an Alt HBA to add borders to all of them. And then let's come down and look at gross PP&E. That's gonna be the sum total of all of the CapEx we've ever spent. If I write it in such a way that I lock that first cell, but not the second cell, then when I copy it, I get a running sum 
So for any of these rows down here, I get a running sum over here. We'll use that a lot in future models, so keep that in mind. We're going to do the same thing with depre accumulated depreciation. In fact, I'm just going to copy that, paste it here, edit it, and move it to DDNA so that I'm summing up everything from L27 down to the current row. I'm going to hit Control Enter to copy that all down. And you see that we start accumulating this depreciation like so. I wish I would have put a negative sign on that so that our gross PP&E over here on our schedule is positive. I'm going to hit Control Enter to put that in all of them. And then I can add these two with an Alt. Well, that wasn't a good shortcut. I'll just have to sum and add those two. Copy that one down. And this shows the book value of my asset as it gets depreciated. That's my net PP&E. Again, not too important for this model, but just a good reminder. So when we get to balance sheets in the next module, we have, uh, have something to look back at. What I'd like to do now is add a loan. And now we are ready to talk about the beginning balance of the loan. That's going to be zero at time zero, won't pay any interest, but I want to take that draw. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come up here and add a few input. And let's say that we are going to borrow $5,000 for this project. So our first draw would happen in year zero. Let's say we borrow it all in year zero. So I'll just grab the full 5,000 up here. And then our ending balance is going to be whatever the beginning balance was plus any draws or negative payments to reduce the ending balance. And then we can start the next year. The beginning balance will, of course, be the ending balance from the previous year. And the loan interest paid is going to be whatever the beginning balance was times the interest rate, the loan rate. We'll lock that one. And I'm going to assume no more draws or payments for a while. And so my ending balance, I can just copy down because again, it's that. Let me copy these formula text for you. Now we can see it all. So let's copy this down. The loan interest page should have been negative. Now we can copy our loan schedule down. So I want to call this loan interest paid, indicating that negative is a payment on that loan. I'll just pick up that loan interest paid from the schedule. Copy it down. And since I'm paying some interest on the loan, I need to back that out if I'm really going to call this unlevered tax unlevered after-tax cash flow, because unlevered suggests that I had no loan at all. So right now I'm getting a, a benefit from paying this interest on my taxes. So I want to add back that tax shield. And what that tax shield was worth to me was if I paid $500 in interest, then what I actually got was one that much times one minus the tax rate in a tax deduction. When we were calculating our taxable income, we reduced it by the amount of the interest and then we multiplied it by 20% to get the taxes. So the tax shield was 80% of the amount of interest that we paid or one minus the tax rate times the amount of interest that we paid. So I want to put that in there. I actually want to make it negative or make it positive with a negative sign. And I guess I'll have to lock that tax rate. And so now my unlevered after tax cash flow is actually the net income, add back the DDNA, add in the capital expense, but also I need to subtract off the amount of tax shield that I got. So these numbers should go down a little bit. Instead of 3867, which benefited from that interest that I paid, 
my unlevered cash flow was only 34. What's that saying is the project without any loan or borrowing would have a slightly lower cash flow from that perspective. Now we want to talk about, well, what if we really did have a loan and what would my levered cash flow look like? My levered cash flow would look like my unlevered cash flow, but this time I would benefit from the tax shield and I would also benefit from the loan draws or suffer from the loan payback. So that'll be basically the sum of these three cells. I just need to calculate what that loan payback was or loan draw. And so in the first year, it was actually positive for my levered cash flow. So when I add in this 5,000, it brings my levered cash flow up to 5,000 instead of 10,000. That's exactly why we use leverage. So we don't have to pay the whole 10,000. We only have to put out 5,000 of our own money. And this is what those levered cash flows look like from there on. So if we know what the NPV and the rate of return are for the levered numbers, let me lock this cell. And I can copy them. I'm sorry, I said levered. I should have said unlevered. Copy them over here to see what it looks like from a leveraged basis to say what this loan draw or payment was. And so if these are unlevered and this is leveraged, then Alt HAC to center those, what we see is that we can create a lot more value from an NPV standpoint by taking on the loan and our rate of return on our equity is significantly higher than if we didn't use the loan. So now we have covered, we've built the basic model, we've gone ahead and added a DDNA schedule, and we've added a loan schedule. I will post this file to let you check your work against this one, and then we'll come in in the next video and start building a dashboard.